Vibrato is probably one of the harder techniques to learn to do well on the cello, and there are a lot of the ways that your vibrato can get derailed as you're learning it. So I've got three pre-vibrato exercises. These are things that you can do before you start really learning vibrato that can help avoid some of the pitfalls that you might find later down the road. The first one I call hovering fingers. So when you're first learning to play the cello, most students learn what we call a blocked hand. In other words, as you put higher fingers down, the lower fingers stay down with it. I teach this way as well to beginners. This helps stabilize the hand, bring some strength to the hand, nice shape to the hand. But when it's time to vibrate, you have to start playing one finger at a time for the vibrato to work. I found that when students start learning to vibrate, they often start doing strange things with their fingers. The fingers that are not down will either point straight up or they'll bend back into their hand or some combination of both at the same time. I've probably seen every possible variable over the years. So it's a good idea to do this practice I call hovering fingers. And you're not trying to vibrate, but just playing with the fingers, always staying just a little bit above the string, whatever you're playing making sure that you're building strength in each individual finger and relaxation in the hand. And so go back to early, maybe book one pieces. For example, and practice with your hovering fingers. Again, you're not trying to do any vibrato at this point, but just building the strength and the relaxation in your hand that you will need later to do vibrato. The next exercise is very easy. It's just slides. So you're just sliding up and down like this. You can put your fingers on one string or even put fingers between strings and just slide like this. The reason to do this is to establish the idea that the vibrato motion always comes from here, from the elbow, this kind of motion. When you see advanced cellists vibrating, it may look like they are doing a kind of doorknob motion because the hand will rock a little bit but this is not where the vibrato motion actually comes from. If you're trying to do a vibrato by doing this doorknob motion, stop now and learn to make the motion always come from the elbow. On cello, this is to me pretty much the only way to learn to do vibrato. So sliding like this. And you can start off slowly. You can go quicker, more narrow. This is just a basic starting point. And the last one I call bowing on the wrong string. And how this works, you're going to do the sliding motion on the D string, all four fingers on the D string, while simultaneously doing a slow, long bow on the A string. If you don't have any trouble doing this, then you probably don't need to do this exercise. But what happens with a lot of students at this point is it's hard for them to make this hand move fast and this hand moves slowly. So what will happen is something like this. And if that is you, which is quite a few students, and then practice this. Just, just takes a little bit of practice to coordinate the difference. Because if you can't do this, obviously you can't really do vibrato. This will have to move fast, and this will have to be independent this way. Side benefit of the bowing on the wrong string exercise is that it forces you to make a tunnel with your left hand and to have good hand position. It also just builds a little bit of um, coordination with the tone production. So uh, a lot of times when you're first vibrating, we forget to pay attention to what the bow is doing and make kind of a bad sound and we don't know why our vibrato is not sounding good. Sometimes it's just because the bow is not making a good sound. So try out these exercises and I'll hope to make another video where we get into the nitty gritty of learning to actually vibrate.